What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today, uh, we are not going to be opening our Fuck Champs rewards with exception of the Red Inform packs. I'm then going to give you guys a live game in um, Fuck Rivals. I have already claimed my Fuck Rivals rewards. We once again went Division 4, Rank 1 Untradeable, 2 Primes, 2 Rares two megas i'm not going to open those either the reason why i'm holding off is because screamer cards are out tomorrow and i want to save them for that so we are going to claim our fuck champs weekend league rewards we got gold one we choked hard i went from 18 and 3 to 21 and 9 it was a full-on falling apart so two 100k packs saved for tomorrow so for tomorrow's screamer promo we're gonna have two 100ks two 50ks two 45ks two 30ks we get 50,000 more coins in the bank as well. And then two player pick special item packs. Now, hopefully, I'm going to get something good. I, all I would love is pretty much any of the Premier League players other than Bernardo Silva. I don't really care about him. But if we could get... If I could get Chesney and Sandro that together, obviously, I'm asking for a lot there. That'd be great. But Van Dijk, Eric Bailly, or Romelu Lukaku would be out of this world. Without further ado, drop a thumbs up on the video if you're enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you never miss a video. Let's get player pick number one. Come on. Oh, let's go. Arnautovic is nice. That is, I mean, he's not going to be a starter for me. But he will be a big, big sub. Obviously, because we've got Trezeguet, because we've got Sané and the likes... We can't really start him, but that is a fantastic card. Great strength and aggression. Really nice ball control and dribbling. Good composure. Good passing, crossing. Like, this is a nice card. I'm very, very happy with that. Mitrovic, Malinovsky, and Kololi can all get out. And we can take Arnautovic there. I am delighted with that. That is a, for gold one. Let me tell you something. I've just done videos on top 100 guys. They didn't really get better than that. You know what I mean? Here we go. Pick number two. Come on here. Hook me up. Don't hook me down. Ah, I mean, Veya is a nice card. It's, it's just, it's another, like, hey, compared to last week where we took Barkley and I can't even remember who the other guy is. He was so bad. This is a massive, massive step up. We missed out on Van Dijk by Lukaku, Alexandro, Chesney, but Carlos Vea and Arnautovic, not bad. And again, this Vea as a super sub. I, I don't know if I would ever use him as a super sub. I've got so many players that are so good. Uh, we are going to take Carlos Vea. So those are my two red picks, guys. Vea and Arnautovic, 284s. I am not in the slightest complaining about that. I think that compared to what I've seen people get, compared to how just generally low rated the team of the week is and what could have been on offer for us here today, to pick up 284s is phenomenal. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. So as I say, we've got lots of packs saved for tomorrow. We can't use, we got, yeah, we got 282s last week. So we're up to 284s for this week. We can't use, um, let's go and get these two cards. We can't use Arnautovic to start, sadly, because he just doesn't fit what we want. However, we can pop him on the bench, no problem. And I'm, I'm going to take Carlos Vea on the bench as well. We're going we're gonna to have a couple of the red informs on the bench. Our club is starting to look a lot nicer. And what I'm going to do now, guys, is we're going to go and get into another live game uh, on, on FIFA. So I will be right back. Okay, guys, our opponent for today's video has got a 4-2-3-1 team. It's actually a nice team. Felipe Anderson, Vardy, Deli Alli, Henderson, Stones, Mendy, and Edison. And then Barzagli, Cancelo, Cuadrado, and Matuidi. A really nice Juve uh, quartet down in that right-hand side. I've got the yesterday's video open in front of me, guys, so we're going to take some live comments. 
Um, the first one is from Rodrigo. It says, hi, Nep, just wondering why you don't spend some of your coins in two-player packs until you upgrade your team. Love your vids. Watch since FIFA 16. Uh, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. What we're saving those for. Because a lot, a lot in fact, in, in, just in general, uh, well, let me answer the question first and then we'll go to where we were going to go. Um, so the reason why I haven't spent them on two-player upgrade packs yet is because I would rather burn those coins for those kind of packs when there are extra cards in packs. So when the Screamer promo comes tomorrow more than happy to do two player packs because we got a chance at informs we got a chance at big pools and we got a chance at screamer cards right now without those screamer cards in packs it just lessens the opportunity for us to get anything good so in general like the coins that i've got and, and i don't know how many coins completely i i've got if i sold everything that i'm not using in the club of course a lot of things i'm keeping because they are going to be usable in uh, sbcs and such but in terms of actual sellable items, if I sold the ones to watches and the informs that I've invested in, oops, I don't want to go ultra attacking. Uh, if I sold the um, the consumables and and uh, um, other other players that I've invested in, because I went and bought a whole bunch of 82s and 83s a couple of days ago because I felt like they were at rock bottom prices, and, and I do want to talk about that a little bit as well, just for your guys' information. Um, then I, w I would have. A considerable amount of coins. I would say somewhere around the eight to nine hundred thousand coin mark wouldn't be uh, too far away from what I would expect to have, especially due to the fact I already have two hundred and fifty thousand coins, and I just spent a uh, hundred and oh, that could be no, I just spent a hundred and sixty thousand or so, maybe a hundred and eighty thousand on one of my investment techniques. So yeah, I, I think. What I will do is, I've got a lot of coins to spend on those two player packs, basically. So when I get around to wanting to build them. We'll spend some money, we'll spend some coins, and we'll build them. No problem at all. We've got some space here. Very nice. La Croqueta inside. Penref. Let's go. The old La Croqueta of dreams. So there was a top comment on the video the other day, or maybe on one of the draft videos, saying that they hate it when I continually say the word La Croqueta. It's what the skill move is called. I don't know what else to say. Like, unless we call it something new, like the Croc or something like that. But one very valid point was somebody said it very it frustrates me when he calls it the La Croqueta because La Croqueta is the I don't know what like the whatever Croqueta is crochet or I don't know. Um, so I can kind of uh, understand a little bit why you get frustrated about that. But about me just saying a skill move. I mean, come on, man. What am I supposed to do? Just call it a skill move? Like, surely you guys want to know. Ooh, that was bad. Surely you guys want to know what it's called or when I do it and how I do it. I don't know. Um, so in terms of coins, uh, I get asked the question a lot. If you picked a, if you packed a really, really, really expensive high-rate player that doesn't fit your team, would you sell them? And my response is always no, because right now I don't need coins. You know the way this series goes. As long as I've got a few hundred thousand coins and a whole bunch of our items in in the club. Oh, I shouldn't manually defend, but I did, and it failed twice, but we got there a third time. Um, yeah, that, you know, eventually I will need coins for an SBC that I'll love. You know, there will be something, and no matter how expensive it will be, I'll be like, yep, I need that SBC in my life. And so for that reason, I'm holding on to a lot of players and a lot of coins. You know, I could go all players or I could go all coins. But yeah, if I packed, like, so the, the question was put to me today, actually, in the Discord that I have. If I packed someone, say... There's that shot again. I knew that as a goal. If I pack someone, say, like Stoichkov, uh, Prime Stoichkov, tradable, would I sell him? I mean, ultimately, I would use him, of course. But let's say I didn't need to use him. Let's say he didn't fit into my squad. I wouldn't sell him because I have, you know, if I sold all of my items now and I had 800 to a 800,000 to a million coins, can't do anything with those coins. The only thing I could do is SBCs when they come or open packs. So, you know... David Trezeguet just taking a swan dive there. He thinks he's playing COD. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily do anything with those coins. So, if I packed a huge player, I wouldn't sell that huge player because you never know when you're going to need them, want them, or use them. Um, the next point of that, though, was put to me uh, by Al, Al Smizzle. He said to me, but what about Black Friday? And I was kind of a bit confused by what he meant initially. And I was kind of like, well, what about Black Friday? Like, that, that I'm okay with... Uh, you know, not using this player until Black Friday either. Um, and he said, well, in terms of Black Friday, the market crashes. So if you're holding on to players, you're going to lose out on coins when you eventually might want to sell them and have coins. And so that is definitely also something to take into consideration. Um, 
Let's get let's get uh, let's get our boy out front. Let's get on out of it straight onto the field. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something that we have to take into consideration. I think in terms of like super players, I would keep them no matter what. Uh, Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar, uh, Bale, any icon to a degree, unless it's a really trashy baby icon, I would keep them. Uh, in players, in in the sense of. Um, like just lower tier players than super players, like the one tier lower, I would contemplate selling them because although I've not packed a lot in the last two weeks or so, I definitely think that there are certain players, let's say Dries Mertens, for example. Dries Mertens, in my opinion, is, is the kind of player that I will probably pack three or four times throughout this year because of the way we're doing this uh, this this system so it's very likely that if i got a Dries mertens and he didn't an immediately fit into my team and there was cause to s sell him due to the fact that player prices could potentially crash because of a an event or a promo or something then yeah i would absolutely get get rid of them um so there's that so when i was uh, on stream a couple of days ago i was buying up lots of 82 rated cards and lots of 83 rated cards for really cheap and the question i get kept kept getting asked was why are you buying these cards? There's no reason to buy these cards. So why are you buying these cards? And that is why I was buying the cards. Because there is no reason to buy them. And the fact of the matter is, is when there's no reason to buy a card, it's at its lowest point. So if you buy an 82 rated right now, I was picking up all the 82s from a lot of minor leagues and indeed from a lot of major leagues for 800, 750, 700 coins. A few of them up towards 900 that were a little bit more usable for another reason. Maybe they were a, a big nation from a league that wasn't their nation. So like a Spanish from an Italian league or an Italian from the English league, something like that. You know, there was, a, there, there was maybe an extra 100, 150 coins uh, more expensive. But the reason why I bought the 82s and the 83s is exactly because there is no reason to buy them. So if an SBC comes out, that could be a goal, that one. Oh, just wide. If an SBC comes out where you need lots of 82s and 83s, I've got two options now. I could either sell them and make some good profit if I don't want what the SBC is offering, or I could use them and complete the SBC for considerably cheaper than everyone else if I do want what the SBC is offering. And so that's why I bought 82s and 83s at a time where it is seemingly unnecessary to buy those, those, uh, oh, that could be a goal there. It's, you know, at a time where it's seemingly unnecessary to buy those cards because they are at their cheapest. And it's the same as, as informs and stuff. Like this week, uh, I've got, you know, we've got 250,000 coins in the bag right now. Tomorrow during the screen promo, when everybody's gonna be opening a whole bunch of packs, I'm gonna go and pick up just a few informs, not not even the relevant informs. I might pick up a few Carlos Veyas as an 84 rated inform going for about 14 or 15,000 coins. I might end up picking up a few of the discard informs because you know you can get those at like 10,000, 9,800, 9,500, some of them. Um, and then you could sell them on for like 12, 13,000. And, and hey, it's nothing major. We're not, we're not gonna be making hundreds of thousands or millions of coins off of this, but it's just a good way to put our coins into something safe that even if it all goes wrong and I'm desperate for getting coins back, these kind of cards, they won't, we won't lose out on them. And it's the same with the, uh, oh, that could be a goal. It's the same with the 82s and 83s. They will not go cheaper than what they are. Maybe like, maybe this video will have small impact on these players. Maybe you're now some people are going to be sitting there, well, well done, man. You've ruined that for everyone now. I'm just going to bring on Vera out on this right-hand side. I just want to get him on the field. Uh, why not? You know, there, there's going to be some people that are going to be unhappy with the fact that I'm expressing what I've done with my account and that it's going to hyperinflate the prices and everyone's ruined and FIFA's ruined because I've told you what I did with my coins. There's going to be some people that do that for sure. And maybe the prices go up 10 or 12% for the next 12 to 24 hours because I've just sp spoken about this for sure. But as soon as Screamer Promo is out, players are going to get flooded onto the market. These players are going to be cheap as chips to pick up. So yeah, you know, the worst case scenario is they don't go up in value. You, you don't have any use for them. You want your coins back. And so you just sell them for what you bought them for. And or, or, you know, list them. If you bought a card for 800 coins, you can list it for 850 coins. And guess what? It will sell. And so when the tax is taken off, you're going to end up making about four or five coins. So, you know, worst case scenario, you lose a few coins, maybe like 10 coins, 20 coins a card. Best case scenario, they go through the roof. Uh, and I'll do the same with informs and stuff. So that, that I just wanted to explain to you guys a little few things I'm doing with the account. Like I said, I've, I've also got some consumable investing that I'm doing. And um, it's a very tricky one is the consumable investing market because 
like obviously uh, as per every year i get um what i'm doing contested right a lot of people just contest what i'm doing a lot of people believe that i'm cheating a lot of people believe that you can't do what i do without spending money or without siphoning coins or without buying coins from you know your own accounts and stuff in fact one guy accused me of transferring coins from my pay to win account onto my road to glory account not even understanding the fact that they're on different consoles so i don't know how i would do that if i if i figured out a way to move coins between the two different console types then i will become a very very rich man because i'm i'm more than just a fifa player at that point i am i'm a a computer engineer that is more extraordinary than any computer engineer on the on this on on god's green earth really um so yeah a lot of people just like they 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 don't they don't believe what i do is legitimate and and i document about 99 percent of all the things that i do but there are some things that i don't document and i'll explain to you why so in terms of trading methods in fact you could probably gather one of my trading methods that's going on right now um just by what you would have seen on the trade pile when i went to the trade pile and that was that there was about six or seven squad fitness cards that had sold and i just cleared them off because it like they they sold i don't need I, I know what i listed them for i know what i bought them for and what i bought them for and what you could buy them for would be two diff very different things depending on the time of day that you buy them whether you buy them on bin or on bid, um, how much time and effort you put into finding them at the right price, you know, it, it's, it's all relative and it all matters. Um, so the reason why I won't tell people or won't necessarily show it in great detail is this. I was buying and selling Anchor Chemistry Styles, okay? I was buying them for around 700 to 800 coins. Oh, that's nice. Um, I was buying them for around 700 to 800 coins and I was listing them for 1200 to 1400 coins for a while. Uh, the Anchor Chemstar market generally just picked up as more and more people started playing the game. And then I started buying Anchor Chemstars for about 15 to 1800 coins and selling them for about 24 to 2700 coins. Uh, I explained that on stream, right? And, and I'll, I'll also explain why they sell for more as well in a second. But I explained that on stream in front of about 800 people. And I explained to people that, hey, don't, don't, don't do what I'm doing, right? Because if you do what I'm doing, it's not going to work for anybody. And so I said to people, don't do, don't do what I'm doing. Figure something out for yourself with a different chem style, with a player or anything like that and go go there but of course because people can't think for themselves on this game and that is not a shot either i know there's a lot of young people that watch these videos a lot of lazy people that watch these videos into or not lazy but a lot of people that don't have time to figure things out for themselves on these videos um that you know i, I completely understand and and can uh, can comprehend that fact but um what what happens is is even if a hundred people just started copying me all of a sudden now, there's, instead of me mass bid, mass listing uh, 30 or 40 Anchor Chem styles and then relying on people that are lazy in the market to buy them for a little bit above market price, and I'll also explain to you why people buy them for a little bit above market price in a second. Instead of my cards being some of the only cards that are listed up there for lazy buyers to buy, I've now got, I'm now competing with 100 brand new people that all that nearly went in uh that are also trying to like do the same thing with the same card at the same price so there still might be 20 to 30 of these anchor chem styles selling over price per hour it, the difference is i'm competing now instead of just with maybe one or two other people that are doing this i'm competing with one or two hundred other people that are doing this so the chances of the lazy buyer buying my card above buying somebody else's card is very slim so, what are, why do lazy buyers buy lazily? What, what causes it? Well, there's a few things. People that are literally just lazy, they will always buy things. Um, they will always buy things a little bit overpriced because they can't be bothered to find out the right, the right uh, market price. So, generally speaking, if you put something up for about 20 to 30% more than it's actually worth, as long as it is reasonably priced, somebody will buy it. If, if the average price for um the anchor chem style was 17 to 1800 coins and you've listed yours up for 2200 coins somebody might just be like oh i can't be bothered to find the actual cheapest one i'm just going to buy this one because i want it now and i just want to go uh, you know i essentially just want to get this on my player and, and go from there and so people buy it quite lazily in in that sense right after that you've got to consider um the that's only a few hundred coins profit per card, 400, 500. Why do you even care? And, and this is what comes down again to 
for, for, for me, the reason why I do this, uh, one of the main reasons why I do it like this is because I can't snipe. And it's not because I can't snipe, it's because I, my, I'm, I'm quite, a, quite a distance away from the exchange, right, the, the EA servers. So my, my ping is a little, like a little higher than other people that snipe on PlayStation with so many extra people that I can't actually get the cards quick enough because I, my ping just doesn't send the data to the EA servers and retrieve it back quick enough. So even if I see a card first, because we are talking hundreds of a second, even if I see the card at the first, it might take the, the server too long to send my data and retrieve it where somebody else that has a quicker ping but saw it a millisecond after me will actually get the card. So I have to rely on the way I do trading myself here. The way I do the trading here, relying on lazy buyers to, to buy my cards at about 30% over market price only works because I am here all day. I can relist my cards every hour, uh, which you can do on companion app and stuff as well. And because I, uh, I mass list, if you buy one anchor chem style to try this out and then list it up for four or 500 coins more than you bought it for and keep listing it and listing it and listing it, you have got to hope that your one anchor chem style gets picked up at the right time as somebody is searching. And that would be very, very difficult. However, if you have 30 or 40 or 50, somebody's going to click through a couple of pages, not be bothered and just pick one up. And if they're all yours, you get the sale. So that's why that's why it works for lazy buyers. That's why it works in general. And, and that's what like, I don't show it because of the reasons I've just explained to you guys. I will show you my trade pile, some of the things that I've got on the trade pile. Mostly at the moment, it is um, I'm nearly up to Division 3 again. I don't want to be in Division 3, man. I just don't want to be in Division 3 EA. Why will you not learn? Um, hey, that's quite nice. We got up to rank 3 already just in one game. But yeah, I'll show you my trade pile. Most of my trade pile right now is, um, is, is fitness cards. Because fitness cards, as you can see there, just sell more than anything. So a few position modifiers, mostly fitness cards. And I'm selling them all for 1600 and I bought them all for about eight to 900 And they're selling at three, four, five, sometimes eight an hour. So I'm only making like, you know, maybe eight times 800 coins an hour. Nothing major, but when you're doing it every hour, five, eight, 10 times a day, it all adds up. And so, you know, for me, it's a really good way to continually make coins. It takes some effort and it takes some time, but that's how I do it. But this, guys, is going to be the end of the video. We've got a nice win there with our team. We didn't really do much. I was, I was so focused on talking that I didn't really, uh, didn't really focus on the gameplay there. But I'm glad we won. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.